the poet, one of my favorite and most admired poet in Canada. And his, her work actually has been translated into 17 different languages, so that's what Paul, Paul just told me. And also, she has been named the Vancouver City, the third poet laureate. And um, her famous first memoir, Runaway Diary as a Street Kid, was published when she was only 18 years old. And it was later turned into a, a mini movie with CBC. Her book, you, her portrait who won the Nelson Acorn People's Portrait Award, You Are Not Who You Claim, and also Oedipus Dreams, was also nominated for the Governor General's Literary Award for Poetry. Her most recent collection, Living Under Plastic, won the Pat Lothar Memorial Award for the best book of poetry by a woman in Canada. So now, Evelyn Lau. Thank you. I really didn't want to follow Dr. Jan Wall there. That was absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm the consolation prize tonight because uh, uh, Fred Waugh, Canada's poet laureate, was uh, supposed to be here and sent his regrets. So you get the Vancouver Poet Laureate instead. Um, <laughs> the first poem I'm going to read is about my grandfather. It's the story of his life. And, um, you know, it can be a mixed blessing being a child of immigrant parents. And I think this, uh, this poem conveys that. It's called Grandfather. My grandfather sold fountain pens for a living supporting 12 children and a wife who hated him. The first child was a boy, fat-bellied and auspicious, then 11 daughters, unstoppable as destiny, one of them my mother. Grandfather's life was bitter, with hardly a scrap of joy in the scrabble to survive. It was the usual tired tale of hunger and sacrifice, the tale my mother always told. Her face pinched and flower pale, of birthdays eagerly awaited. In lieu of cake or wrapped presents, she would be given a hard-boiled egg. One whole egg, all to herself. I imagine her pushing it inch by inch into her mouth, swirling the milky white and sunny yolk round and round with her tongue, swallowing only out of pity for her jealous siblings. My grandfather was a worn and fragile man, at dim sum, surrounded by his family in this new land of plenty, he rose painfully to pour tea with a shaking hand. His wife began to shriek that he was trying to scald her to death. Murderer, murderer. Did he eat his haga, his sumai, and his steamed pork bun? Or did he sit for the rest of the celebratory meal, saying nothing, staring at the shining plates around the silent table, his appetite gone? Later that day, I would steal down to the basement of the suburban house to lick up handfuls of sugar like a horse. I wanted to suffocate under the sacks of grain and rice to eat enough for a family of 14. I chewed my tongue in greedy haste until bits of flesh orbited my mouth, until a hot broth of acid and vomit gushed out. My grandfather died in his third daughter's armchair. My aunt, who decades later would grow swollen and dumb as a melon from the cancer that consumed her brain. His wife cursed him at his funeral. I remember my mother climbing out of the car, tight-lipped in black, watched her fall to her knees in the gravel, toppled at last by grief. On the ride home, she twisted round in her seat and said, if you dare to cremate me, if you feed my body to the flames, I will haunt you for the rest of your life. Lucky child of immigrant parents, every morning of my life, 
I've swallowed an egg for breakfast. White slurry and fatty yolk, soft slosh of snot and fetus, as if every day were my birthday. <clears throat> Um, this is a poem called Long Life, and a number of the poems in this collection um, are about my aunt's death from cancer. 